welcome to the first principles message of 2019. I hope you've all had a wonderful holiday with your families and it's great for all of our students to be back at Billanook for this year. Today I'm joined by a really special guest, Mr Philip Johnson, who's a parent of the school, got two boys, Will in Grade 1 and Angus in Prep. And Philip, you're, you're a gardener, aren't you? I'm a professional gardener, <laughs> yes, Roger. So t tell me a little bit about the work you've done so that, so that our community can understand you know, the amazing skills that are in our parent community here. So I've been designing and building gardens for the last 27 years um, across Australia. Uh, and then I had the privilege five years ago to represent Australia at the centenary year of the Chelsea Flower Show, where we won the top award, gold and best in show. And, and you know, that's a pretty amazing achievement to win not just the gold, but the best in show as well. Um, the Chelsea Flower Show, that's really quite an amazing achievement, isn't it? You had the Queen come and we had the Queen, Harry and had Will Harry and, and all, the, all, all the royalty was all just, the royalty was there. Uh, extraordinary. But it's just wonderful to promote an Australian garden on the world scale. Yeah. Now, um, post coming back from Chelsea, um, some really interesting people made contact with you, didn't they? So we've just had recently contacted um, the Deputy Premier, Mr James Molino, uh, where he's going to help fund a certain section of this garden to be recreated. So we're going to pick up the Chelsea Flower Show winning garden. We're actually going to put it up in the hills near me, aren't yeah, you? Ab absolutely, on the Dandenong Ranges Botanical Gardens, which was the... Uh, the the former old rhododendrons gardens. gardens. Yeah, yeah, that's so. right. So as, as fellow Hills residents, yeah, that's really is. exciting for us, isn't and it? And to bring that project home, because yeah. that's where I live as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's a beautiful yeah. Now, post-Chelsea, um, two pretty incredible ladies made contact with you, didn't you? So you want to tell us a little bit about Okay, so who I was they... introduced um, after Chelsea by the former Premier, Ted Ballew, because uh, these two ladies, their dream was to take this poppy project to the Chelsea Flower Show. And he said, I know the person you need to meet, uh, Philip Johnson. So I was introduced to Lynn Berry and Margaret Knight, where they started this amazing community project where they started um, making 120 poppies, like you see here. And it started off, all they wanted to do was make 120, wasn't it? For the honour of their fathers that served in the Second World War. Yeah, yeah. And this has really just grown into a global movement, hasn't it? To 120, to <clears> 5,000, <throat> that's where the name 5,000 poppies came from. Then to 50,000, then to half a million. Now we have in excess of a million handmade poppies that have been made from people around the world. And, and help us understand how you helped them. They, they were involved in the making of the poppies and what your role was, was to... I wanted to use my design skills that I have. The contacts I've had from winning gold and best in show at the Chelsea Flower Show to take it to the world scale. Um, then we took it across to northern France to the Battle of Fromel to honour the centenary of that. So you actually did an installation on the Western Front, Front didn't you? Where wow. 5,500 <clears throat> Australians were injured or killed within two days of fighting. Yeah, yeah. And then we brought it back home uh, to the Shrine of Remembrance and then uh, last year for, to mark the end of the First World War. Roger, at the Shrine, at the Australian War Memorial. So the, the War Memorial installation to signify the end of um, the, the First World War, that was a really a, quite a massive installation, wasn't it? It ran all the way from Parliament House to the War Memorial, didn't it? Pretty much. It's extraordinary. So you will be able to see in some of the imagery, but it's amazing um, linking the Parliament House to the Australian War Memorial, reminding politicians each day their decision making service and sacrifice what occurred down the end of the Anzac yep, yep. Parade where the war yep. was positioned. And, and this poppy project has grown into a really quite an amazing project in that, in that people from all over the world have been knitting poppies for people that are part of their families, people they knew, yep. people down the street. Absolutely. And um, these, these threads of connection that have connect people um, from a hundred years ago. And you've got a handful of poppies here. They all mean different things, don't they? You've Absolutely. got you've got some white centres. Yeah, some white uh, ones that are representing the, the nurses, um, some the purple for animals. And you've got some yellow, yellow black and red red ones there for ind indigenous servicemen. The blue ones for the for the French, I think if I'm correct. correct. Um, <clears throat> and it's really quite quite a poignant reminder of, I suppose, ultimately 
the freedom we enjoy today, isn't it? Our national anthem for We Are Young and Free. I just picked the, yeah. the Australian logo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the really exciting news for our community is that Philip has made a really, really generous offer to our school to help us for Anzac Day this year do a, our own poppy installation on the creeks of Brushy Creek, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. It's going to be and special. Um, so what do you think about when you think about a design? You know, we're, we're going to be down on the brain banks of Brushy Creek? I, I think, as you've seen some of the imagery, um, it's really important for people to be able to connect to it, to, to, to walk through it, to experience it. Uh, we're wanting all <coughs> students, Roger, yep. to, to make one. Yep. And we're wanting parents, grandparents, grandfathers, friends of friends to be part of this, to make yeah. a hobby as well. Because the vision you and I have is that this is going to be an incredible community activity, isn't it? Because we're, we start... In about a week's time, we're going to run sessions down in the Carolyn Stone Centre, um, helping students learn how to knit and, and how to crochet. Creative, and we've created the project. Lynn yeah, Berry going to come Lynn out. Berry's coming to help us. But the vision we have is that we can see nanas and pops in other parts of Australia and other parts of the world knitting poppies also yeah. for people that are really important to them as well. And bringing them back to the school and our vision is to have our students construct the installation, isn't it? Yeah, we we want plant. we want our kids to physically place the poppies that they've made or their grandparents have made as part of the installation. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think you, you mentioned something that's really important, which is that we want our community to be immersed physically in the installation on Anzac Day. Yep. And that's our focus, isn't it, Absolutely. is Anzac Day? And this can be repeated year after year. Um, this is something that we should never forget part of our culture. Yep. Something, something that I found really interesting when you did the Shrine of Remembrance installation is that I, I think I had clearly incorrectly in my mind that all this work would go into this installation for Anzac Day at the Shrine of Remembrance. And at the end of the day, someone would come around and pull all the poppies out. But you actually left them there, didn't you? We left them there. It allowed them to naturalise. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, flowers germinated. I actually even harvested oaks that had germinated in the yep. field over a five, six weeks. And, and that's part of our vision, isn't it? Is that our, our installation will be there for Anzac Day, for our service at school. But that we will just leave it there and let it remain there to continue to remind us of what Anzac Day is about and, and the and service that people offer. And even some of the poppies I've just got here, some of these have travelled well, this around one, the world and weathered. That one looks really old, so doesn't imagine it? imagine in 10 years' time those poppies have come back out, planted again, and yep. another 10 years' time it's growing and it potentially could build and build and build. Yeah. So the vision we have is that this is going to be a wonderful whole of Billanook community activity. Um, if you're interested, have a look at the college website. Uh, you'll see a little panel on the front of the website that talks about the Poppy Project. It'll provide you with links to the 5000 Poppy website where there's patterns to knit and crochet. Um, and part of our vision is to see mums and dads and nanas and pops and aunties and uncles um, creating poppies for people that are really important in their lives. Because... These are great conversation starters, aren't they? Without a doubt. Absolutely, without a doubt. And where this project's travelled all around the world, it's connected to so many people, so many different nationalities, yeah. ages of people. We've had people as young as two, up to 102, help create these poppies. Yeah. So if you're interested in further information, um, have a look at the college website or send an email to poppy at billanook.vic.edu.au and we'll be able to help you with further information. Um, but... I can't say thank you enough, Philip, to you for your, for your offer of support to the community. We have incredible community members at Billanook who have amazing skills and who offer so much to our community and particularly to our, our children. And that's what makes our school such a rich place, doesn't Absolute it? Absolute pleasure. My yeah. two little boys mean the world and I'll do anything for them yeah. and for their friends and family. Yeah. So get involved. 
get your knitting needles out. Um, it's not a skill that I have, but I, I, I intend to learn. Um, but welcome back to 2019. It's been wonderful to have all of our students back at school and all the best for a really fabulous year. And thanks again to Philip. Yeah, thank you.